What's up guys, Tim Little, welcome back to Tactical Bassin. Today's video, we are talking about how to catch fish on soft plastic worms. Most of us, when we first got into bass fishing, we started off by fishing soft plastic worms, either Senkos or big ribbon tail Texas rig worms or a drop shot or a Ned rig. For the most part, most of us, because it is so easy, it works so well, uh, finesse fishing soft plastics was how we got our start in bass fishing. Uh, and today, when the bite gets tough, sometimes we have to downsize and go back to that finesse fishing. So today's video, got some underwater clips for you, got some things to think about the next time you're out on the water. Uh, in the winter time, it's cold out, I'm in sweats, got the down jacket on, and uh, some things to look for, some things to pay attention to, and that will better determine if you're catching or blanking. There's so many different finesse baits, soft plastic worms, everything there's so much on the market we're going to simplify it got a couple things for you to look for and that will help you catch more fish the next time you're out in tough conditions and you're trying to catch them on finesse so today's video like i said got some underwater clips for you some really cool clips for you um, and some things to think about number one like i said it's cold out pay attention to your weather patterns right now Bluebird skies, had a storm come through uh, the last two days. So today is post frontal. Typically, that is a terrible time to go bass fishing, but let's be honest, we don't always get to pick and choose the best times or the times we get to go out fishing. So if it's post frontal, you know, uh, typically those fish are shut down. Typically that's when you're gonna have to go uh, less reaction and more finesse. You're gonna have to slow down fish down on the bottom, fish a drop shot, a Ned rig, a jig, something like that. But depending on the weather, uh, it will really determine on the style of fishing that you do. Uh, number two, and probably the most important, if you uh, have a boat, if you have electronics, you really need to pay attention to your uh, 2D sonar uh, and if you have side imaging 360 or forward facing sonar, but typically your 2D sonar will tell you uh, the most. It'll tell you if those fish are up off bottom, maybe just six, 10 inches, a foot, maybe two feet off bottom, or if they're down there glued to bottom with their bellies in the mud. Depending on how they're showing up on your side or your side imaging or your 2D sonar, will tell you the best technique to catch fish during those conditions. So that's what we're gonna cover today. Um, I kind of broke the, the, the techniques that I'm gonna talk about into two categories. Basically, your bottom contact baits, you know, your Ned rig, your shaky head, something like that, and then your suspended baits, your drop shot, you know, taking a bait and suspending it up off bottom and putting it in that fish's face, just letting it sit there and soak and getting those, getting those bites. So those are the two different categories. Um, fishing this time of the year, a lot of times you're not gonna feel that real hard thunk, right? You're not going to feel that bite. Your hands are going to be cold. Everything is going to be moving slower. So you want to be fishing your baits extremely slow. You don't want to have a ton of action on your, your drop shot or your Ned rig, whatever you're throwing. You know, if you're throwing a Ned rig, you just want to be dragging it, right? If you're throwing a drop shot, you just want to be dragging it just a shake here and there. Every once in a while, I'll give that bait a little bit of movement. Matt here in the next couple of videos is gonna do a more in-depth finesse video. Today's video is more what to look for and how to pick the right baits. So let's talk about the Ned Rig. You know, a lot of times this time of the year, I'm catching fish down on the bottom. They are glued to bottom. Sometimes they're super hard to even see on uh, the 2D sonar. You just see that little blip down there. Um, and their, their bellies are just glued to the mud. You catch them and their bellies are just all like, uh, if you're fishing a lake that has that red clay or that orange, just all orange and red. They're literally on bottom. Um, a lot of times they're looking for rock just off of that, you know, trying to find that rock transition. But those fish are down there and they're not gonna be moving, right? They, they move very, very slow. Everything down there in that ecosystem is just 
slowed down with those water temperatures down. You know, the bait fish are moving slower. The, the bass are moving slower. They're not going to really want to cover a lot of water unless they're up in the water column and they're hunting or you can trigger them with that reaction bait. Uh, that's a completely different video. Uh, typically, they're slow move, moving, their metabolisms are slower, and they're just down there just kind of hanging out, and you want to just bring that bait to them. Again, like I said earlier, a lot of times you're not going to feel that hard bite. You're just going to feel like that, that wet rag feeling. Something happened, something weighs a little bit different. You're going to see that little bit of deflection in your rod tip. Something a little bit different is going on. A lot of times, they just pick up that bait, it's just a taste. You're there, your hands are cold, you don't really feel what's going on, you feel a little bit heavy, and then you feel another tunk, and that's them taking that bait in. Then you reel down and you can set the hook. So a lot of times, this time of the year, if those fish are down on bottom, my number one go-to bait is going to be some kind of Ned Rig, okay? It's got an exposed hook exactly for that purpose. That's why I typically go with the Ned Rig over a, a, a weedless Texas rig or a shaky head because it does have that exposed hook point. A lot of times those fish are gonna eat that bait. They're gonna nibble on it. They're gonna suck it in. And a lot of times, if you're not up on your game and you're not feeling that heavy weight, they're gonna try and spit it before you actually realize you have a fish on it can set the hook. But having that exposed hook point is key, right? That's the same reason that I, when I talk about my drop shot, I'm gonna talk about having an ex exposed hook point. It's key because a lot of times with a nice sharp hook, those fish are gonna hook themselves trying to spit that bait out before you realize you have a bite. So uh, that's another key tip for you guys. Typically this time of the year, I'm fishing an exposed hook because I want that, uh, I want that good hook penetration. You're fishing light line. Like I said, everything is moving slower in the, in the water column down there below the surface. And the fish have a ton of time to sit there and really analyze what's going on. Really look at your, your bait, your presentation meticulously and really decide, do I want to eat that? Do I not want to eat that? Okay, I'm going to try it. I'm going to sniff it. I'm going to try a little nibble. All right, I'm going to suck it in. And I'm going to spit it out. So you want to be on your game to feel that, feel that extra heavier weight. A lot of times it's going to feel like just having a, a wet rag on your rod tip. You know, you're not going to feel that tick. You're not going to feel that funk. If you do, you're going to feel that little tick. Usually that's when they suck it in and that's their lips closing on the line or their crushers back there eating it. But a lot of times you're not going to feel much at all. You're going to feel a little bit of difference. Uh, and that exposed hook will mean putting more fish in the boat or not. This is probably why, you know, it's not really, it is a finesse technique, but it's not part of the two today, but a, a big, heavy uh, finesse football jig, you know, a half ounce, a five eighths, a three quarter jig. Again, you're just down there dragging. That's why it works so well. You're fishing that rock, you're fishing that, that mud line uh, down there, that transition, but you're just dragging that bait. You might hop it every once in a while and get them to eat, but for the most part, you're down there, you're eye level, you're in that mud, you're in that rock and you're just bringing that bait along. So that Ned Rig, um, it's down there on bottom, but again, the key thing is having that exposed hook. Now, if you are a pond fisherman, and you're a guy that has maybe some sand grass or a little bit of grass still left in your fishery, you can go with a shaky head, you know, rig it weedless to kind of stay out of that, that grass. And if you can get away with it, go with that exposed hook point, because a lot of times those fish will hook themselves on the roof of the mouth as they're trying to spit your bait, your presentation out. So that is the Ned Rig. And some of my favorites, just like every video, I'll link them down below in the video description. That's the little X zone right there. Got the Robo Worm, little uh, Missile Baits, Ned Bomb, the little three inch Ned Senko by Yamamoto. That's a great one too. Uh, but down below in the video description, I will link my favorite baits and colors. I keep it really, really simple. Go natural. Again, like I said, these fish are going to have a ton of time as you're dragging that bait. They're going to have a lot of time to inspect your presentation. So now let's talk about if the fish are up off of bottom. So you're using your 2D sonar, you're using your electronics, uh, and those fish aren't necessarily glued to the bottom. 
you know, maybe it's pre-front and there's a, a storm coming in, those fish are up, that's a sign to me that they're wanting to feed. So uh, I like to go away from the bottom presentations, you know, the, the, the direct bottom contact baits, the Ned rigs and such. And that is when I'm gonna switch gears to go with the drop shot. You know, those of you guys that don't know what a drop shot is, it is literally uh, taking your bait and suspending it up off the bottom. So you tie a Palomar lot knot, you can have a two inch leader, you can have a two foot leader, but the gist of it is you get this bait suspended right in those fish's face. It's sitting there, you know, you want a bait that's gonna sit horizontal. It's really important to use light line, light hook. That's that mosquito light wire hook. You don't want a hook that's too heavy and overpowers your bait and makes it sit kind of wonky in the water. But the, again, these fish are gonna have a ton of time to inspect your bait. So you wanna go something natural. That's that Yamamoto, that's that D-Shad. That's the uh, little three inch bait. But uh, more importantly, it's the technique, right? You wanna slow down, you wanna suspend that bait in that fish's face. You don't wanna give it a ton of action uh, just to be dragging along. Every once in a while, give it a hop, let that bait kind of come down, flutter down, and that's when they're gonna suck it up, right? Again, you're not gonna feel that tick. You're gonna feel just kind of that mushy, that, uh, that mushy feeling, I've always described it as like having a wet rag on the top of your, on the tip of your rod. Again, you're going to fish that exposed light wire hook. That way they cannot, well they still can, but it's not as easy for them to spit out your bait uh, without you feeling them and before you can reel down and set the hook. But again, you go with something natural, something small, and again, it's, it's not a lot of action everything down there in that little ecosystem is is moving around slowly right so you want to match that you don't want to bait down there just flapping all over the place and looking all crazy go natural and go slow if you this time of the year if you think that you're going too slow go a little slower it does not hurt to go slow let those baits those ned rigs the drop shot let those baits soak those fish they're not going to travel a lot of you know, it's not a giant presentation. They're not gonna travel. They're not gonna come a long ways to eat your presentation. Maybe eight, 10, 12, 15 feet at most, depending on water clarity, but they're not gonna want to move a lot. So you wanna bring that presentation slowly and let them come over, let them dissect what you got and hopefully take a bite and you can set the hook. Guys, as always, hopefully this helps you. If you learned something from this video, give us a thumbs up, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel. If you do have any questions, please leave those down below in the comment section. I will try to get to those as soon as possible. But this time of the year, slow down, downsize, pay attention to your electronics. If they're on bottom, throw that Ned rig. If they're up off bottom, throw that drop shot and you guys will make the right decisions and catch more fish this time of the year. As always, like I said, thanks for watching and we'll see you guys on the next video.